going to unite in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Wonderful, Jesus. Another time, oh God. We are standing in your presence, mighty God. In your presence, dear God. There is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, mighty God, there are pleasures forevermore. Wonderful Jesus, we give you thanks. We give you praise, mighty God. It is nothing good that we have done while we are here this morning. But God, because of your grace, because of your mercy, we are standing in your presence this morning. And mighty God, this morning, you alone deserve the glory. You alone deserve the praise, mighty God. God and Jesus Christ as we come before you. I pray mighty God that you will bless every word every song this morning remember our past and family oh God cover them under your blood give them strength from day to day mighty God Remember GTT family. Oh God, bind us together in one accord. Help us, oh God, that as we join hands and hearts this morning, that Jesus Christ, hallelujah, we will pull down strongholds, mighty God. And mighty God, that you will get the glory this morning. Jesus Christ, I pray, mighty God, that mighty God, you will help us, mighty God. Oh God, to remember, mighty God, the sacrifice you made for us, mighty God. God and that Jesus Christ in remembering mighty God that Jesus who will hold up that bloodstained banner mighty God of Daniel help us oh God to live a life mighty God that our light can shine mighty God Jesus Christ remember this community those upon the hearing of our voices I pray mighty God that you will touch their hearts help them oh God to realize oh God that mighty God time clock is striking and mighty God right now mighty God you're in the saving business and tomorrow is promised unto no man and that Jesus Christ there's no repentance in the grave oh God I pray mighty God that you will help the mighty God to cry out to you Abba Father oh God help the mighty God to get salvation in their soul why the blood run it warm through their vein because God hallelujah that is appointed unto every man almighty God no man know the time nor the hour so God I pray mighty God that while the blood run it warm that Jesus Christ that will seek salvation hallelujah Father God, bless every word, every song. Remember our musicians. Remember those who are on social media this morning. I pray, mighty God, that those who are not saved, that Jesus Christ, you will pick their hearts this morning. Oh God, give them a heart, mighty God, that yearns after you this morning. Give them a heart, mighty God, that will pant it after you this morning. Oh God, I pray right now, mighty God, that you will take full control of your service. Let self be slain this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help us, oh God, to realize, mighty God, that you are the one that saved. You are the one that healed this morning. Oh God, touch each and every one of us, mighty God. Oh God, saturate this place, mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Touch each and every one right now, mighty God. Remember our praise team this morning. Remember GTT family. Oh God, cover each and every one. Remember those, mighty God, upon the hearing of our voices. Oh God, cover them, mighty God. Let your will be done in the house this morning while I say thanks to you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Have thine own sweet way this morning, Jesus. Have thine own sweet way this morning, Jesus. Have thine own sweet way this morning, Jesus. Let your power flow through this building this morning. Let your power fall, mighty God. Mighty God, take control this morning. Have thine own sweet way. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. We worship you. We exalt you. We glorify you this morning. We bow down before you this morning. 
morning. We give you all the glory this morning. God, you deserve the glory. You deserve the praise. All honor is given out to you this morning. Take control, Jesus. Take control, mighty God. Take control. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We honor you. We bow down before you, God. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You didn't have to make us live. But because of your grace, because of your mercy, we can stand in your presence this morning to lift up and to adore you this morning. God, I give you thanks. I give you thanks this morning, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Let me take the time out to greet the Holy Spirit that is with us this morning. I'd like to greet my pastor, First Lady, Lady Williams, departmental leaders, Grace and True Tabernacle family, visiting friends, those who are on social media. I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Isn't God good? Isn't God good? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Hallelujah. We'll commence our morning service by singing hymn 31. Are you washed in the blood? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing part? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace? This or are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Oh, have you been to Jesus for the cleansing for? Are you washed?
Sister Paulette with the morning's lesson. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. And can you worship the Lord as she comes? 
Bless the name of Jesus. Shall we praise the Lord, everybody? Shall we praise the Lord another time? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we keep worshiping the Lord? Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is a good God. We praise you. We honor you. We worship your name, Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Our morning lesson will be taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. And it reads, But I determined this with myself, that I would not come again to you in heaviness. For if I make you sorry, who is he? Then that maketh me glad, but the same which is made sorry by me. And I wrote this same unto you, lest when I came, I should have, excuse me, I should have sorrow from them of whom I heard to rejoice, having confidence in you all that my joy is the joy of you all. For out of much affliction and anguish of heart, I wrote unto you with many tears, not that I should be grieved, but that he might know the love which I have more abundantly unto you. But if any have caused grief, he are not grieved me, but in part, that I may not overcharge you all. Sufficient to such a man is this, is this punishment, Okay, is this punishment which was inflicted of many, so that contrarywise he ought rather to forgive to forgive him and comfort him, lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with over with overmuch sorrow. Wherefore I beseech you that ye would confirm your love towards him. For to this end also did I write that I might know the proof of you, whether ye be obedient in all things. To whom ye forgive any things, anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it, for your sake forgive I it in the person of Christ. Lest Satan should get an had avenge of you, advantage, sorry, of you, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Furthermore, when I came to Taurus and preached Christ unto preach Christ gospel, how oh bad, and a door was open unto me of the Lord, I had no rest in my spirit. Because I found not Titus my brother, but taking my leave of them, I went from thence into Macedonia. Now thanks be unto God, which always cursed, caused us to triumph in Christ, and make it manifest the Savior of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God, a sweet Savior of Christ, in them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one we are the Savior of death unto death, and to do other the Savior of life unto life, and who is sufficient for these things. Verse 17. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. Here in the portion of God's holy word. Thanks be to God. In verse 8, Paul encourage us, encourages us that we should confirm our love towards him. Bless the name of Jesus. Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And can we just worship the Lord one more time in the house? Can we just give him all the glory right now? Thank you, Jesus. You deserve the glory. You deserve the praise. We honor you, mighty God. We bow down before you this morning. God, we give it to you, mighty God. You deserve it, mighty God. You deserve it this morning. My honor belongs it unto you this morning, mighty God. Jesus, I give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. 
don't want to get adjusted to this world, to, to this, this world. I've got a home that's so much better. I'm going to go there soon or later. I don't want to get to this world, oh, I don't want to get adjusted to this world, to this world. I've got a home that's so much better. I'm going to go there sooner or later. I don't want to get adjusted to this world. Bless the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it is for us to be reminded that God has entrusted us 
to proclaim the good news that Jesus had paid the penalty for sin. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. So my unsaved friends, now is the time for us, for you to reconcile with God. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Now is the time to reconcile with God. Hallelujah. First, you have to believe in him. Acknowledge your sins. Ask for repentance. Receive baptism in the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. And he will pour down his spirit upon you. Bless the name of Jesus. And live a clean and holy life. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just worship the Lord? Can we just honor the Lord? Hallelujah. God, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. God, we worship you this morning. I thank you, mighty God. Jesus, you have taken that journey, mighty God. Just for me, mighty God. Hallelujah. God, there's spot on your face, mighty God. They gave you stripes in your back, mighty on your back, mighty God, just for me me. Hallelujah. You took the fall just for me this morning. And God, I'm forever grateful. I'm forever thankful, mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. God, I honor you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Why me, Lord? What have I ever done to deserve even one of the pleasures I've known. Tell me, Lord, what did I ever do that was worth loving you of the kind
Yes, I believe And I know it won't be long I don't need to pack anything When I'm going to see the King He has everything prepared On the Hallelujah Spirit One more time Yes, I believe Yes, I believe in, and I know it won't be long. I don't need to pack anything when I'm going to see the king. He has everything to his prayer on the Hallelujah Square. Hallelujah. 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 It is a great day to give thanks unto the Lord. A day in which he has made. And we have all right to praise him. Let me welcome you to church. Let me welcome you to grace and truth. Tabernacle a spiritual scent of a life. Let me welcome those who are visiting with us. Sir, it's good to have you. And those who are visiting with us, happy to have you in church today, worshiping the Lord. It's a great day to feel the presence of Almighty God. Those who are online, let me welcome you to church. Amen. God is a good God and there is none like unto him. Let me welcome the Grace and Truth family. Happy to have all of you here worshiping the Lord another time, another day. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy, and at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. He is a great God. He's a wonderful God. He's all over me, and he's keeping me alive. And I believe that signs of the time, they are everywhere. But I'm keeping my eyes upon the eastern skies. My redemption joy at night. Oh, God. Mm. We're going to go to the word of Almighty God. But if we think about what the Lord has done for us, I think it would be rather fitting for us to sing this song once, just for a reminder. If it had not been for the Lord, on my side, tell me where would I be? Hallelujah. Where would I be if it had not? If it had not been 
Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 of the chapter. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Christ, by Jesus Christ, and are given to us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them but are committed unto us the word of reconciliation now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he had made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that he might be made the righteousness of God in him. Father, we thank you for your words, dear life, dear power. God, what a great day to be standing in your presence, dear God. And every time I stand before you, holy God, I remember how frail I am, so insufficient I am. But except for the cross, I would be still lost. And God, I thank you for the cross. I thank you for the price you pay. God, today as I stand before you, God, help me to humble myself in your presence. And God, in so doing, dear God, you will speak through my heart. You will speak through my mind. God, as I wait patiently on you, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated. To be reconciled means to be restored to friendship or harmony. To be reconciled, it means to be restored to friendship or harmony. So before you can be reconciled, it means that something, if one decides to reconcile, it means that something is wrong. All right? And you have to come back and you have to talk over your wrongs and try to make one, wrongs right. And when wrongs become right you, and everything work out, then you come back into harmony. We are looking at the topic, the ministry of reconciliation. Indeed, reconciliation is a ministry. How does that work? Once our relationship with God has been restored, we are called in service. God has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. We are therefore ambassadors. We have, who is our ambassador? Anybody know? An ambassador is one who represents a country. Amen? So we have our Jamaican ambassadors all over the world and while they are there, you will hear the people in other states that they are going to the Jamaican consulate. They are going to our ambassador and whatever they need to be resolved, they would ask that our ambassador do the same. Amen? We have one that is called, I think is Camilla Johnson-Smith. Is she 
our representative. And if we have issues overseas, you will realize that they will call on her because that ministry is under her portfolio and she can dialogue with various governments on their citizens' behalf. So what she's in, she's in the ministry of reconciliation. Amen? What happened recently, I think it was with popcorn, he went overseas, I think it was in England, and he was detained when he got there. Huh? And all he had to do was to make a phone call to Jamaica, asking the Jamaican government to make representation on his behalf that they can free him to move about in that country. Amen? So we have, as it were, our ambassador who called the U.S. Um, um, the, um, um, English embassy, and they what? They, um, they, she stand as, she, as it were and reconcile on his behalf. Amen? Amen? So all of us who are born again believers and are in this house, upon us is given the ministry of reconciliation. Amen? How does that work? We will discuss. The ministry of reconciliation that is placed upon us as believers are, are, are given to us for us to be like ambassadors who will go before God and ask for God to have mercy on so and so and such a one and such a one and ask that God will bring that one into covenant relationship with him. So if you see a child of God, we are not any ordinary person, even though people think that we are ordinary people. Upon us is placed the ministry of reconciliation, and we have the opportunity to go before God, as it were, and, and make representation for. Amen? So all of us... We should not take it for life because God has given us, he has reconciled us to himself. We who were sinners, we who were not good, the Lord Jesus Christ has reconciled us to himself. We have come into harmony with him. Amen? And how does that work? When we repented of our sins, when we were baptized in the name of Jesus, when we were filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and as we start living all the lives before him, we become reconciled to God, and then he plays on us now the ministry of reconciliation. Amen? Amen? Can I say go home? Amen? We have to somewhat as Christians work in our ministry because it is a ministry for us to work in. If you are called to bring people to God and you don't bring them to God, it means that you are not operating in your ministry. You are given a ministry that you are not operating in. And why would God place on you the ministry of reconciliation when you are not doing same? You can imagine the awesome responsibility that we have. It's like having a teenager who decides to become pregnant and have to have the child don't know where else to turn. I just want the church to understand something. Because they weren't prepared for parenthood. So the, the son would run to the mother and their father and ask, What do you mommy? And what do you do? And then the daughter would try to find out from her parent what to do. We are living in a real world. Huh? And as a boy growing up, sometimes I would see girls, they would back to their mother, hands back, rude to their mother. And as soon as they become pregnant, everywhere the mother going, you see them walking behind her. And I say, what are we going to get calm now? Because you know what happened? They have found themselves into a 
position where they have to reconcile to their parents because you know what happened? They don't know what lies ahead. That's the truth. God put this ministry on us and he wants us to use it. If we look in the scriptures, we realize that the Lord placed even this ministry on Moses and Hiran. And he would ask them, as it were, to remind the children of Israel in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 9. And help them to understand that it's not any good thing that they have done while he is allowing them to be where they are at. But it's the ministry of reconciliation that have been meted out to them while they are still around. The Lord, as he spoke to Moses, the word of God says, he speaks to Moses and he said to him, listen, call Aaron and get Aaron and let Aaron come. And as Aaron come, Aaron will be offering sacrifice to me based on the people that are here. Because the people that I've saved out of Egypt, the people that I want to take to the promised land, they are a hard and stiff naked people. They are a group of people that I want to say, but it is hard to save them because they are rebellious and stiff naked. Anybody want to hear the truth? So every time the children of God would rebel against God, God would have to ask Moses to ask Aaron to go before him and to take an e-goat and to take a, 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 a lamb and he would offer the sacrifice and he would place the sins of the people upon the e-goat and he would ask somebody to take that goat out into a land that is not inhabited and let it go and let it run with the sins of the people. And every person that would offer the sacrifices before God, ah, uh, before they can come back into the tent, the word of God said the Lord requires that they would wash their clothes and wash themselves and purify themselves before they can be reconciled into the camp. So Aaron used to do that and ask the people and said, listen, it's not every, any good thing you have done because you know what happened? Ah, God, God would have killed some of you already. Look at Moses. The word of God says Moses went up into the mountains and when he went up into the mountains, he was in the mountain and he was hearing from God. He brought with him two tablets and God was writing on the tablets of stone. And while God was writing on the tablets of stone, the Lord turned to Moses and said, Listen, I'm writing you these commandments for you to take back to the children of Israel. But as I see what is, what is happening in Israel, they have forsaken me. They have been up golden calves and they are worshipped in strange God I want you to go down and speak to them because I'm going to kill them and the word of God said when Moses heard it Moses fast 40 days and 40 nights without eating or drinking water and Moses was saying to God I beg you please save them some of us would have died hadn't for the spirit of reconciliation. Haven't for somebody who keep interceding on our behalf and saying, Hear, O oh Lord, the sound of our voice. Hear, O oh Lord, and have mercy. Jamaica could have been worse off had it not been for persons who are praying and saying, Have mercy, Jesus. Somebody keep praying. And Bridget, when when 
God looked at Israel and when Moses came down and saw what was happening, the word of God said Moses break up the tablet because he could not believe that the people that the Lord has done so many good for is so ungrateful. And the Lord said to him, cut out two pieces of board and bring them come. I'm going to write on them again. And I'm going to send you back to them. But Moses kept on fasting and praying before God. And saying, God, God said, let me kill them. And give you a better generation than they. A stronger generation. A more powerful generation. Because the children of Israel, they are weak. And they haven't done nothing good to be still standing before me. No wonder the songwriter said, nothing good have I done to deserve God's own son. But he chose the road to Calvary to die in my stead. Ah, why he loves me, I just can't understand. But yet still, we are still ungrateful. It's like nothing. It's like nothing. So the Lord, as he speak, as I look through the scriptures and think about this, my mind go back to Jacob and Esau. Jacob become, became, as it were, a type of Christ. And I started reading from one, from one chapter to the other chapter and looking at the life of Jacob. And as I start looking at his life, the word of God speak out. Oh, he was born to his parents. And while his, he was in his mother womb, the mother realized that trouble was brewing in her womb. And she went to seek after God and said, God, I don't understand. In my tummy, fighting is going on. Something I go on in my belly that may not understand. And the Lord said to her, two nations is in your womb. Ah, God Almighty, the younger shall serve, the older shall serve the younger, and they are in your womb, and they are going to come out. So before Jacob and Esau was born, the mother knew very well who would be serving who. The firstborn was Esau, and his father loved him. Uh, and when she looked after the first child was born he was born year full of year all over and the second one was coming and he makes certain that the first one don't leave him he held down to his foot so one baby was being born and the other one wake up the other one held on to his heel and the other one makes certain you are coming I am right behind you when they look at him, he was considered to be a heel grabber. So they called him Jacob. He was a trickster. And the Bible says the mother loved Jacob, but the father loved Esau. So in the house there was a division because the mother knew the love that the father had for that son. And she said, this may I love the next one too. That one there for me. And that one there for you. Hello? But as the children grew, Isaac became old. And Jacob without doubt in the back of my mind his mother said to him if you don't trick your brother you are going to serve him and she was always listening around he saw would cook sweet Vincent. he would go and catch wild animals out there maybe deer or something and he would make sweet savory food for his father and his father loved him Jacob would hang around the house with mommy. Pastor Broom, Jacob, come in, mommy. Esau was out in the field. Let me quickly run on. The word of God says 
that the mother was at home one day and she heard when the father said to Esau, I can't see and I'm going to die. So I want you to go to the field and, and, and catch me something nice. Come back and cook some nice things for me. And then I will eat and I will bless thee before I die. The moment that was told to Esau and Esau picked up his bow and was heading out to the field. The mother called Jacob and said, listen, your father is going to bless your brother today. But you can get the blessing instead of your brother. The brother, Jacob said, me can't drink food. Every time he saw go inside, he feel him and he feels his hand and he makes certain it is Isa. And the mother said, the Jacob said, I don't want to be cursed. The mother said, let the curse be upon me. Just go to the father to the farm and catch two young kids and bring them and clean them up. And I'm going to show you something. She made nice Vincent. It's when your mother teach you to cook, she can't trick anybody. Because she can't cook just the same way you can cook because she teach you to cook. You understand that? So what happened? The word of God says, she cook, she put the ear of the skin over his hand and into his dress. And send him in with the food. And the, the boy said, Daddy, your food is here. And hear what the father said. A voice sound like Jacob. Come over here, let me feel you. And when he feel the hand, the hand was Esau. And when he feel him a little more, he said, This is Esau, but the voice is Jacob. The long and short of it, Jacob stole Esau's birthright before her, and now he's going to steal his blessings. And the mother always have a plan B. After Jacob received the blessing, she watched Esau come home and prepare the meal, took it into the father, and the father said, I bless, J I bless you before. How come? What happened? And Esau was crying with tears. Do you have even one little more blessing you can offer to me? The daddy said, no, I gave it all to your brother. He's already blessed and you are going to serve him. The word of God says Esau was wroth and he said, ah, daddy, your, your dead day is right around the corner. After you're dead and buried, they will kill Jacob. And the word of God said the mother heard the story and called Jacob. And said, I'm going to send you to your uncle Laban. And I want you to go to your uncle Laban. And stay there until your brother's temper is cooled. So she packed up Jacob and she sent him off to his uncle Laban. And she, she before he left, the, the father called Jacob and they dialogued. They said, listen, don't take any woman of the Philistines. Don't mix yourself. And this is what the church need to understand. When people in a church, them not mix up with unsaved Don't mix up with certain kind of people. They are bad for you. So here all the royal family begins. When he get down there and he was walking, he saw a beautiful girl. And when he saw her, it was time to fetch to water the sheep. And it was, he, he decided to help. And he asked him, anybody here know, no Laban, he's my uncle. And Rachel said, yes, he's my father. And the word of God said, Jacob fell in love with Rachel. So she, he fell in love with his uncle daughter.
he was madly in love with his uncle daughter and he went home and his uncle received him and then he decided to help out and the uncle called him and said it is not fair because you have my nephew to be here and you are working and I don't give you a wage and he said to uncle uncle you don't have to pay me you know what I want I love Rachel I will work seven years for Rachel Uncle Laban said, yes, my son. And he started working. And when the seventh year come, he said, Laban, uncle, remember. Uncle called the people and planned the wedding. And when the wedding was over, because the women have to wear shame face, their face has to be covered. You won't see your wife until you get into the matrimonial room. So some of you get up in church and a buck bus big kiss and all different kind of French kiss before altar. You would not have that. And people have said, do it again. In the altar. Mm -hmm. Let me just catch a sore point, is it? And they make it seem like everything is all right in the halter. I believe the halter is a secret place. And some things you take it in your bedroom. I heard somebody say, I believe that too. He did when he woke up the morning after consummating the marriage. He realized that his uncle tricked him and gave him Leah. And he did not want that one. He went back to his uncle and said, Uncle, why you give me the wrong girl? The uncle said, The, old, the, the younger one can't marry before the older. But Jacob, let me tell you something. What goes around comes around. He tricked his brother and ran. And he went and worked seven years and got tricked. And he said, listen, uncle, I really want Rachel. So I decide to work another seven more years to get Rachel. And the whom the Lord shut up the room up there. She could not have. And after that, the word of God says, after the seven years, he worked 14 years now, and she, he got Rachel. Rachel Wombs was also shut up. Leah, look how the story. Leah sent in her maid to bear a child for Jacob. And after that, the Lord opened the womb of Leah and Leah produced and Rachel no was without because her womb was sh also shut up. And Rachel was now saying, listen, I can't afford for Leah to be boasting on me. So she sent in her maid to her husband. God Almighty, and her maid produced for her husband. And her maid produced. And the two maids were having children right across the board for the one man plus two wife. And Rachel prayed to God and God opened her womb. And between the two maids and the two wives, they have 11 children for him. So you see in those days when you decide to become a woman's maid you must be willing to go the extra mile God almighty Jacob worked and after he worked he decided now I have 11 children 
with four women. And I decide I want to go on my own. So he said to his uncle, give me something, man. May I work? Pay me. The uncle said, what? He said, let us look at this castle. Since I'm here, the Lord has blessed us immensely. And your cattle, which was few, is in abundance. All the ones that have spots and blemish on them, I'll take it. And you take the plain ones, the nice ones. And he agreed. But you know what happened? Jacob know how to crossbreed them. And Jacob crossbreed them. And Jacob crossbreed them. And before Laban know it, Jacob had more than him. And decide to leave. So Jacob pack up with his two wives and his two maidens and his 11 children. And he left. But Jacob remained in constant dialogue with God. Even though his life was not perfect, he was in constant dialogue with God. He still have on his conscience his brother that he need to reconcile with. So the word of God says he would send message to his brother and said I would love for peace but his brother meant for war and Jacob said oh can I reconcile with my brother? Word of God speak volume. He said, Jacob, when at one time when he got back his message, he said that the brother said, I'm coming with blood in my eyes and I'm going to kill you anywhere I catch you. Ah, 400 men against him. To the point, 400 men, you know. So you know what happened? Him split up the wife then. If the two wives dead, he have two maiden left. And if them two maiden dead, he have two more wives. Split them up and split up the pit in them. Just in case then they attack one and kill out some, some still left. Everybody in other one place. And he decided, listen, separate on yourself, man. He had a batch with him. And the word of God says that he reached a point in his life when he really wanted to reconcile. And he said to all his wives, his two wives, take away yourself. Take one yourself. Leave me alone. I need to stay alone by myself. And the word of God said, when he was about to leave, Laban said, Jacob, 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 but when he prayed, the Lord turned vengeance into love. So you see, the ministry of reconciliation is important. Let me say thanks to this wonderful group of people. Because every time you kneel on your knees and mention my name before God, I know just so. And every time I mention your name is favor. You didn't know that? When your leader kneel down and call your name, favor me before God, a favor. And every time you kneel down and say, God have mercy and my pastor and his children, that's fair and his wife is favor. Because right there and then you are using the ministry of reconciliation. If there's any blood, if there's any iniquity, if there's any infirmities, God blot them out and make them clean. You should never take it for granted when somebody call your name before God. We 
don't sing those songs anymore. Somebody pray for me. They have me on their mind. They sacrificed their time. They went down on their knees and prayed for me. They have no doubt that God will bring me out. But I'm so glad that someone prays for me. The word of God says when Jacob met his brother, it was all love. His brother run up and hug him and kiss him. You know what changed it? Oh God, I had an encounter with God and I get to myself the ministry of reconciliation. And because of that, there is nothing you can do to hurt me. What you meant for evil, God meant it for good. And every evil thought and every evil device that a man plan against a child of God who know how to pray. Ah, God Almighty is going to turn around. Sometimes we get up and we are worried about the enemy. We don't worry about the enemy. Every time them plan and every time they go down and little the little man and get a little vial and they throw it all over the place, God is going to turn it around and send it back to the sender. They can't win us. I think a man can fight you when you know how to pray. The writer said, I've found the answer. I've learned to pray with faith to guide me along each day. The sun is shining. And the sun will always shine for me each day because I learned to pray. The ministry of reconciliation keep your ministry alive some of us children don't even understand you are the reason why they are still standing today and breathing and they are taking it for granted like the children of Israel they don't know uh, what is happening around them but every time mama and papa kneel down they are saving you another day so we run out we run on. Thank God for that ministry. And I want to use this ministry to say to somebody in the room, if you are not serving God, start serving God and serve him. No. Because God is a consuming fire. He's a frowning judge. And he will not always strive with us. And you pray for the person morning, middle, day, and night, and the person still don't want to God. Still not repent. Still not turning. What should God do? When the children of Israel wouldn't turn, the Bible said they drop one by one in the wilderness. Because God was determined to have a group of people going over to Canaan, but not a group of rebellious people. He wants a group of people who know how to pray, who know how to give thanks. One of the worst persons one could ever deal with is somebody who's ungrateful. The worst. Don't run any risk with an ungrateful person. And that was Israel's problem, ungratefulness. But look, as God turned his search light, and he realized there's a group of people that have come out of harmony with him. There's a group of people who, who have gone back. Ah, God Almighty, he sent forth his son. He put himself in flesh and he dwell among us. And the Bible says to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. You can imagine if the Lord was imputing our trespasses to us. Everything you do, him just dash it by you. 
and look at the things that none of us who sit here would have salvation. But some people want to impute everything. Look at it, number three. God could have imputed on us our trespasses. I said, deal with it. But he hasn't. He take our sins and he took it to Calvary. And he handed to us reconciliation. He said, go and tell somebody about me. Tell them that you are dirty sinner. You are messed up. No good was inside of you, but the Lord has reconciled to himself to you and has given you salvation when I was a nobody. I did not born a holy ruler. I never born baptized in Jesus name. I never born filled with the Holy Ghost. And I never born and never tell a lie. I never born certain way. But God. And I can say to somebody. Jesus can make the difference in your life. He can turn your life around. No matter the situation you are in. Hey, God Almighty, I want to use my ministry to say to somebody, he can change your life. Walk more if you know, man. I need to look like I'll change. Walk to somebody and say, pray for me, man. When somebody said to you, pray for them, I just simple, sir. Sometimes the person struggling with some things. Pray for them. You have that ministry. And this is why, brethren, I, I speak to us as a family. I said if we use our ministry and walk around and tell somebody how oh, great God is to you. And many times people don't have the testimony, you know. But look at the goodness of Almighty God. He could have put my sins upon my shoulder. But the Bible said he carried, went to Calvary and he carries my sins with him there. With those anguish and loss, he went to the cross. And he was carrying my sins. I am not going to impute them unto you. You think anybody in this room can impute anything to me? No. No. God did not impute anything to me. And nobody can't impute it either. Paul in his writing, he said, and such were some of us. But we are washed, we are cleansed, and we are sanctified. Hey, Koshata. We have a God in this room. My brother, he can change your life around. He can turn your darkness into day. My sisters, he can make better things out of your life. Ah, a thief. Conniving. Look on the man. But God turned his life around. After he found God, God kicked his, 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 his line out of socket. His sinews shrink. And he had to walk and hop. And every time you see Jacob, is a reminder of what the Lord has done for him. I don't walk like I used to walk. Way back in God. Before God, he was walking nice. But after God, he walked with a limp. And every time you see him, he has, it's a testimony to say, I found Jesus. I wrestled with him. I would not let him go. And I would never let him go. Even though the breaking of the day was at hand, I would not let him go. My joint was out of socket. I was feeling pain. And I said, I will not let you go until you bless me. 
seeking for a ministry. Oh God, I've done my brother wrong. I've done my family wrong. I've run to Uncle Laban for help. And I've done Uncle Laban wrong. And when Uncle Laban, if you read the passage, Uncle Laban and some men came after Jacob to, you know, to destroy him, you know. But after Jacob prayed to God, when Uncle Laban meet Jacob, Uncle Laban of a friend him. Jesus God. When the man left Uncle Laban house, the man robbed Uncle Laban. Uncle Laban get him in the man do so. And who overtake him? But by Uncle Laban meet him, the man set up stone, the man offer sacrifice. And the man pray for forgiveness already and say, God, if Uncle Laban come turn him around. Every wrong you and I make, if you can find God, God can turn it around and let your enemies be at peace. No wonder the word of God said, When your ways please God, your enemy have to be at peace with you. Not that they want to be at peace, they have to be at peace. They're in subjection to the word of God and the will of Almighty God over your life. So you see when they start to come in like a flood you just start cramp and paralyzing them and no matter what they try God can bring them back on your foot and so God says that the God we serve you know? he met his brother and his brother was filled with pride he said listen I'm giving your brother a peace offering me no want none. The man said, if you don't take my peace offering, it means that you're not forgive me, man. Take some of me, me cattle. Take some of me sheep. Take some of me this. Take some. I have, I don't want any. If you don't take it at my hand, you are not in peace with me. I am at peace with you. Are you willing to be in peace with me? I found Jesus and he gave me a deep settled peace you come with 400 men or 4,000 men or whatever you want to come with to kill me but listen I found Jesus and when you see me ah you want to lift your sword and you can't lift your sword you have to give me a hug feet this is like Balaam and Balak you carry them for curse the children of God. And every time you move up my mouth for give a curse, there's a blessing because you know what happened? The children of God are covered by Almighty God. And you just have a talk blessing. Can I say to us before we leave here today, the enemy is no match for a man that is reconciled to God. We don't have to sit down and wallow in self-pity. The enemy is no match for you who have been reconciled to God. Because the angels of the Lord encamp round and about them that fear him and deliver it them. Look at David. Every time David sin, David run to God. <laughs> you think God tired for you? God only want to know that the man is willing to acknowledge it. So the man run to God and said, For I have acknowledged my transgressions, and my sin is ever before thee. Make the world make nice. Make the world go on. But against thee and thee only have I sinned. So make the man call out sin. And make the man call out everything. God, are you are the judge. Yes. Are you a judge the thing? 
So against you have I sin and done this evil in your sight. But God, I come for repentance today. I want to be reconciled with you. If I can feed you, God, nothing else really matters. Oh, God Almighty. To the writer speaks. We become Christ, children of God. We become new creatures. All things are passed away. We are non purple people. We pray before Almighty God. Everything we have, we take it to Him. He's our peace, He's our strength, He's our help. And we know where our help come from. So everything we take it to Jesus. Ah, oh, God Almighty. I wonder the thought behind, behind this song that says, What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. So you know what happened? We need to start carrying some things to God. Sometimes when some things start happening, we start taking it upon itself. And we just, uh, this morning, I, I just start saying, God, I got to start bring some things and just drop them at your foot and walk, leave it. Because everything I leave at your foot, something happen. Everything I drop at Jesus' foot and walk, leave it in my burden, I see God work. And everything I take up and carry it is more problem. So as I close this morning, let us use this ministry that we have not to curse and backbite and critique, but to tell somebody Jesus loves you. To tell somebody when you sit with your neighbor, oh God, the Lord has brought me a long way. I remember Brother Carbon as he looked at his life he was a reckless gambler. And he, he would make it into a song. He said his money could not spend. And I took the man attack. Every cent he got in his pocket, as soon as it reached his pocket, he gone among gambling house. From morning to morning. But he said one day, Captain Jesus rolled his mantle over him and take him out of the gambling house. And he started saying, Hey, come taste and see that God is good. I could not save a dollar, but now I can save. My life was wrapped up and tied up in gambling. But look at me today. And some of us can name the issues that we have. But look at us today. God. Jesus will make the difference in your life. The ministry of reconciliation. If you are here and you are not, you are out of line with God, you can come to harmony with him right now. If dear one, I came to Jesus, we were one and sad. He loves you. He wants to give you a better life. 
He wants to turn your life around. And as I was saying in here Tuesday night in Bible study, I said, it is only a wicked person. And you have to be very wicked. And very, very wicked. To know that the Lord has died to save you from sin and hell. And don't serve him. I don't think that there's a wi more wicked person on this planet than that person. Who is willing to sacrifice their soul in hell other than serving God? The man who murdered the man. Many times remember that he ever sold to save and run for refuge. That's how it go. But a man who sit down and allow his soul to go, soul to, go to hell, wicked and the murderer, can murder himself. Suicidal. So I don't think that there's a weak, more wicked person than the man that allows his soul to go to hell. Sit with it. Pretend like nothing is wrong with it. And sit there and waste his life and end up into a devil's hell. Because I don't think anybody would love anybody else more than yourself. No matter what try, anybody try that. When we develop self-love, we are heading places. Says the word. Who love yourself. And will take your soul and give it to God. Other than give it to a lake of fire. I will cling to the whole rugged cross. And exchange it someday. For a crown. I am so happy that you have heard the spoken word and the ball is in your court you don't have to serve God if you don't want to the choice is yours the only problem you will face is that God will judge you on your choice Can we stand? <laughs> Hallelujah. Exchange it someday. And exchange it someday. Forever. So I cherish. So I cherish the old one. Till my dreams.
Jesus, the great I am, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the great eternal wonder, Holy Counselor, Zion Righteous Governor. We come before you, God, as your ambassadors. God, we will work the works of you that sent us while it is yet there. We are conscious of the fact that night cometh when we can't work. But God, as we are able body, God, we pray that your spirit will be upon our lives. Ah, God, keep us abiding in you. Keep us covered under your blood. Leave us not alone. God, as we're about to take or leave from grace and truth, we pray that your divine will will be upon our lives. Take us in charge. Lead us gently down the streams of time. Save your leave us, lead us lest we stray. Guide us, dear God, and as school reopens this week, I pray, mighty God, you will be the driver of the vehicles. You will keep your children from accident, trouble, and danger. Ah, God, protect our family members. Ah, God, protect this island of Jamaica. Ah, God, the traffic accidents, dear God. Ah, God, oh, God. They are so dangerous, God. So many things, so many lives have been lost. God, we pray you'll have mercy. God, as we're about to go from here, go with us to our several home of board, provide food on our table, whatever our needs are, we pray, mighty God. As we're about to receive an offering for the furtherance of your kingdom, we pray that your blood, your spirit, uh, God, your love, dear God, which pass it all understanding, God, will cover your children as they give to you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. We'll be having a 10-minute break. Uh, you can refresh yourself. 